Welcome back to my workshop. Now, today uh, is the next in this series of videos about this fantastic table saw of mine. It's the SIP 01332 10 inch cast iron table saw. Now, I finally managed to get some blades. So what I'm gonna to do today is run through blade alignment. Now, this is very important. Uh, so let's put a blade in it. Okay, so the blades I've managed to get are these ones, which is what I wanted to get. Uh, Saxton blades uh, now these are the uh, pro range apparently okay uh, now I've made a bit of a mistake here because I ordered incorrectly uh, now I bought two blades uh, one of them is a 60 tooth and the other is a hundred tooth so this one will probably be for rip cutting and this one for cross cutting so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the <coughs> rip cut blade in first uh, now the mistake I made was I've ordered these and these have got a 30 millimeter arbor. Okay, uh, I didn't want to do this, but because the arbor on this machine is a 25.4 millimeter, I'm going to have to use one of these reduction rings. Okay, I didn't want to do that, but this is what's going to happen. Okay, so let's get this blade into this machine. Okay, so now we've got our blade in. What we have to do now is make sure that this is parallel to these mitre slots. Now this is very important. The closer it is to being parallel to these, the better cut you're gonna get, and it's gonna minimize the chances of kickback. Okay, so what do we need to be able to do this? Now, it depends on what equipment you've got will determine how you do this. Now, a lot of people use these, which is a DTI, a dull test indicator. Not everyone's got one of these, so you could possibly use a set of these. These are Bernier calipers. I think these were about seven quid from Aldi's, so, or Lidl's. You could use these, or a lot of people use these. Yeah, an adjustable square. Okay, so there's options. You can also use a piece of wood a small rule, okay, I'll show you how to do all these. Or you could use your square. Uh, these are cheapest chips and as long as they're square, they're okay. Or finally, you could use your actual mitre. Okay, I'll quickly show you what you need to do. Okay, to make sure that this blade is level with this mitre slot, what you need to do is measure between the blade at the front here and this slot and then measure between the blade here and the slot here okay so what they'll do is tell you whether or not this is closer or this is closer either way okay uh, a way that a lot of people do it is they use a square like this and they measure it here then slide the square to the front and see if there's a gap okay this square is not the best, but it could be used. But what you need to do first is identify a single tooth on the blade. Okay, and what I mean by that is you literally select any tooth, doesn't matter which one it is, we'll say this one here, okay? And then you mark it so you know which tooth it is. I'm just using a Sharpie. And what I'm gonna do is measure here between this tooth and this slot, then rotate this, all the way to the other side, so we still know which tooth it is, and then measure between there and there. That way, if the blade is slightly out, it will compensate for any twist or possible malfunctions in the blade. Okay, so we have our tooth, uh, let's measure it. Okay, so first of all, I'm gonna show you how to use uh, the square. Now, most people would use it, so this line here slots in the groove in the mitre, but this type won't actually work like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use these as reference. Okay, I'm gonna slot them into the slot and make sure I'm referencing this face or this face, but don't chop and change. So I'm gonna use the back face here. 
Okay, and what I've done is I've adjusted it. So I turn our blade to our tooth with the mark on it, and it literally just touches it. Then rotate the blade to the front as far as you can, and then check again. Now I can see I have a gap. Let me show you the gap. Okay, so this is the same tooth here, uh, but you can see there's actually a gap. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to get rid of that gap. Now, if I was using another piece of equipment, I'll show you how I would do that. Okay, so using the same principles, if I was to use a set of calipers, uh, basically what I do is I zero these. Now, it doesn't matter what the measurement is, as long as it's the same. Um, what I would do is I would measure between this point here and our favourite tooth, and then I would measure this point here and our favourite tooth. Okay, that's how you would use one of these. If you're just using a dial test indicator, you'd obviously mount this so it sits snugly in the uh, mitre, uh, and then put this on the tooth, and the same again, move it round and measure here. Okay, so the principle is exactly the same, depends on what you're using. Uh, if you don't have any of those, you can just use a small block of wood. Okay, make sure it's flat and use a rule that's got measurements that go all the way across the rule, okay? Rather than this one where it's got millimetres on one side and inches on the other. Use something that's got millimetres all the way across or inches all the way across. Okay, put your wood up against either the back or the front. Okay, measure to our favourite tooth. And then at the front, measure to our favourite tooth. Okay, same again. If you have a mitre, which you should have, okay, you can do exactly the same without any measurements at all. Okay, so you just go to our favourite tooth, lock it in place. Okay, so the tooth is literally just touching on the mitre. Make sure this is pushed again to that side. Okay and then rotate your blade, okay, and you can actually see quite clearly there, there's uh, about a millimetre and a half gap, okay, so just using that, that's with, with no measurements at all, use one of these, or finally, if you haven't got any of those, you can just use an all builder square, okay, push it up against the blade, okay, Put a finer mark as you can on here, and then do the same here. Okay, this is probably not as accurate, but it will help. Okay, right, so back to our chosen method, which is this. And we can see that it's out at this end by about one and a half mil. Right, how do we adjust it? Okay, so I'm now down at the side of the saw. I've taken off the side panel so we can get to the inside. Now, remember, this is a, a SIP uh, 01332 table saw. Now, your table saw might be different. Now, this is a table saw, which means that the actual carriage that the motor and the blade sit on is bolted to the table from underneath. If it was a cabinet saw, the carriage would be bolted to the cabinet. Okay, so, in this case, it's bolted to the table, so that's where we're going to adjust it. So let me show you what we've got to adjust. Okay, so you can see the blade here, uh, and what we're interested in is these bolts here and those bolts there. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to loosen off these bolts. Now, obviously, don't remove them completely, but loosen off one, two, and then over here, three, now you loosen those off then if you get the carriage here you can move it backwards and forwards okay and I'll show you what that does okay so just so you can see it I've put my dial test indicator up against the blade here uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the carriage backwards and forwards and you should be able to see it move okay so to me and then away from me. Okay, so you can see I'm actually moving the back of the blade. All right, 
So what I need to do now is adjust it, lock it all up and then check it again. Okay, so I've adjusted the, uh, the carriage. Uh, I've tied it all back up again. I've adjusted this, so it's just touching our favorite tooth, which is here, just kissing it. But what I've done is I've gone just a little bit too far. Okay. So now this is touching on here. So what I have to do is go back under the table, loosen them again, adjust it again, and then keep going until I get it right. Right, so that took me six attempts to uh, try and get it aligned properly. Uh, every time I tightened the bolts up, the whole carriage moved very slightly, uh, which obviously threw the blade out. Okay, so persevere with it and try and get it right. Okay, so now if I measure my favorite tooth here, okay, it's the same at the back as it is at the front. Okay, definitely worth doing. So now, Let's check the blade is straight. Okay, so the next check we do is to make sure that the blade is actually straight. So when you wind it to its uh, vertical position, it's actually at 90 degrees to the table. Okay, and I use one of these. Okay, it's an angle gauge. Uh, these are very good. If you've got a table saw, you've got to have one of these. Okay, and all you do with this, there's a million videos on the internet about this, um, but all you do is you literally Put this on your table, you push to zero, okay, this goes to zero, then you attach it to your blade, okay? Okay, so with this little fella, uh, the reason you'll use it while you're setting up is you stick it to the blade to make sure it's at 90 when the angle of the blade is wound to its stop, okay? Then that way, when you're using the saw, if you've done an angle cut, uh, rather than have to get this out again and measure it again every single time, if you wind it back to its stop, then you know it's dead on 90 degrees. Okay, so we've got that set on our blade now. Let me show you the stop. Okay, so we're inside the machine here. Now this thing here, this collar, is the stop. So when I'm using my angle adjustment here, okay, you can see that it actually winds it either away or towards the stop. Now what I want is when this reaches the stop, if I can, okay, when it reaches its hard stop, then the blade is actually at 90 degrees. Okay, let's have a look. Which it is. Okay, if it wasn't, then what you do is here there's a little grub screw you undo this and you can wind this collar either further away or closer to the stop okay so that's at 90 degrees and obviously if you wind it the entire length okay you can see in the distance there let's get my finger in there okay there's another collar now that should be when you're at 45 degrees on here okay then that stop should also say 45 degrees on your gauge. Okay, so that's that. Okay, so this may seem like a lot of messing around just to set up your table saw, but it's all for a purpose, and the purpose is safety and accuracy of cuts. Now the last thing to do is to make sure that your fence is parallel with your mitre slots, because we know our mitre slots are parallel with the blade, okay? Why is this so important? Now, obviously, if you select the size you want to cut, okay, and you're cutting your piece of wood, okay, so we want it like this, okay, so we're cutting this piece of wood. Now, obviously, if our fence is not straight, okay, so if it's tipped like this, okay, when the wood goes in, the back of the wood can hit the back of the blade. Okay, why is that a problem? Well, the problem is this blade is spinning at a couple of thousand RPM. If the back of your piece of wood touches the back of that blade, it will pick it up and it will throw it at you. Okay, that's called kickback uh, and that is painful and dangerous. Okay. Okay, so to align the fence, there's loads of different ways to do it, uh, but all you need to do is make sure the fence, when it's locked down, 
is parallel with the mitre slots. Now you can do that because you know the blade is parallel with the mitre slots. You can either move it up to the blade so it's just touching, lock it into place and then check again between your favourite tooth and the fence. That's one way to do it. Uh, another way you can do it is by moving it over to the mitre slot, get a large rule, slot it into the slot bring the fence up to the rule okay then lock it in place okay this should be this should make sure it's straight to the slot now if you need to adjust it okay on here there's four allen bolts one two and there's two on this side you literally undo these move the fence and then tighten them back up again. Now be careful when you tighten them up because it can move the fence. So you might have to do this two or three times. Okay, and then after it's done, obviously check to make sure that this is level with your mitre slots. Okay, that's that. Okay, we're nearly there, nearly there. Uh, the last thing to make sure is that the indicator dial on your fence is accurate. Okay, so again, the easiest way to do it is move your fence up to the blade, so it's just touching the blade. Gently lock it in place, and then check to see whether your little indicator is in line. Okay, here, so you've got to make sure that this, if you're looking directly down on it, the little red line is in line with your zero mark. If it isn't, there's a little bit of free play. You can undo this little mirror uh, window, adjust it, and lock it into place okay now remember not to look at it at an angle you've got to look at it straight down okay uh, then if that's at zero then you know that your blade is also cutting at zero and obviously one last final check is to make sure that your fence is actually at right angles to your table okay Try and use an engineer square for that. Okay, uh, these are much better. Okay, right, I think we're done. Okay, so that's it. Now, you don't have to do this all the time, all of these setups, uh, but because I've moved the table, I partially disassembled it, it's been transported, it's been bashed about, things have been removed. Um, I've had to go through the whole setup process, but it's worth checking everything every now and again. It takes a couple of minutes to check the alignment of the blade uh, and obviously the angle of the blade and check your fence regularly. Okay, so now that's it for this one. Uh, this table is ready to use. Uh, all I've got to do now is find something to do. Okay, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bear with me a sec while I wobble about. Right, while you, when you're using your saw, right, let's start that again because that was all complete. <laughs>